I've been away for a few days and came back to find that Prince William is engaged to Kate Middleton and she has an engagement ring. And as soon as we see something like that, it's an excuse for chemistry. This ring, which originally belonged to Princess Diana, Prince William's mother, and the ring consists of a large sapphire, blue stone, surrounded by diamonds and mounted on white gold. I think it comes from some shop in London, so you could buy one too if you wanted. But, chemically, it's really quite interesting. Sapphire is an oxide of aluminium, crystalline. I've got a largest lamp here. The aluminium oxide itself is colourless. We use these as windows for our high pressure apparatus. This lamp here doesn't look very big, but it's worth thousand pounds, sixteen hundred dollars. And it's quite heavy. We just use it because sapphire is very strong. We use it as a window so we can look into high pressure vessels and look at reaction mixtures. Here it's colourless. But what's really attractive to people is natural sapphire. This is artificial, made in a furnace. Natural sapphire has metals dissolved in it. And depending on the metal, so you get the colour. And there's not very much metal, but it's one of the so-called transition metals, which, like iron, chromium and so on, which are dissolved, like in solution, and they have a very bright colour. If you dissolve chromium into aluminium oxide, you get a red colour, it's called ruby. And if you dissolve iron or some other elements, you get this very nice blue or sometimes greenish colour. So in the case of Kate's engagement ring, it is a piece of natural sapphire that was mined somewhere, I'm sure outside the UK, and it's aluminium oxide with iron in it. You, you can make synthetic sapphires, but then it's not so valuable. You can get large pieces of synthetic ruby, they're used in lasers. The other part of Kate's engagement ring are the diamonds. And diamonds are carbon, special form of carbon where each carbon atom is bonded to four other carbons, like this. And the special thing about diamond is that it is absolutely clear, like glass. But what makes it special is the way that it's cut. Here's a piece of glass that has been cut like a diamond, and by cutting it in this rather pointed shape, then when you look at it from the front, it glints, it is terribly reflective, you get it sparkling in the way that looks really good. I can't remember how many diamonds she's got in her ring, I think it's 14. They're quite small ones, but they give a nice surround to the sapphire. All these stones are mounted in what is called white gold. This is an alloy, a mixture of gold with another metal. And depending how rich you are, you can choose different elements from group 8 of the periodic table. The cheapest form of white gold uses nickel, which is near the top of the group, but then increasingly expensively you can use palladium or platinum. I suspect in the case of Kate Middleson's engagement ring, it's platinum because it makes it feel heavier and chunkier because platinum is so dense. If you read the official description, it says the sapphire in the middle is 12 carat and the gold surrounding it is 18 carat. Now this is a bit confusing because the carat in the two um, contexts mean different things. For the sapphire, the carat represents the weight. It's a unit of weight that's used for measuring the weight of gemstones. The carat, when it talks about the gold, is the proportion of gold in the alloy. So if something is 18 carat, it means it's 18 parts gold and 6 parts another metal. Probably platinum, could be nickel. Now there's a really nice experiment that I'd like to do with the engagement ring, though I doubt if Kate will do it, which is to heat it up and plunge it into liquid oxygen. 
The diamonds should burn, but the gold and the sapphire should be left untouched. Have you ever bought an engagement ring? Yeah, I bought an engagement ring for my wife many years ago. Hers was a, is a diamond ring, but it's quite an old one. It was an antique ring, and the diamonds are cut in a different way, which are called rose diamonds, which is, in the 18th century, the crystallography of diamond was not as well understood as now, so they don't sparkle as much, but I think they look rather nice.